I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today is a little bit of a different video because it's not about really what I'm showing you on screen right now. Uh, sometimes brands send me some dyes for feedback on a new formulation or a new color and so I can't really talk about all of that but what I can say is that I'm doing a crude swatching with dry dye powder while wearing my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves onto 100 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. Uh, this yarn is 100% superwash merino. I thought that I would take this opportunity to talk about swatching, color swatching in general, why sometimes I do it with dry powder, why I might do it with liquid dyes, and then finally share a slideshow of all of these crude color swatches that I've done through the end of 2022. Because while I have a blog post with a lot of these swatches, and I'm about to make an updated post with the ones that weren't in the original, but while I have that there, I don't think I've ever shown all of them in one video. And so I thought that that would be really handy to have as a resource here. When you're shopping online for a dye color, you are presented with a color name and then some visual representation of the color. And the dye brand often will say what this color would represent, whether it would be a 1% depth of shade of that given color, which means you would dissolve one gram of dye and use that to dye 100 grams of yarn or fiber. We've talked about depth of shade a lot and it can vary a little bit based on the material, but most brands do indicate uh, with the swatches representative of a certain percent of dye on silk or wool or something similar to that. And it is completely worthwhile to looking at your dyes at a 1% depth of shade. I've done this really so far as far as comparison goes with reds, but it's absolutely something that's worthwhile to do with other colors, as is doing triad color mixing. You get to have a really good feel of the colors that you have in your collection and how to combine them to get the colors you want in liquid form. But not all dyeing is done with the dyes in liquid form. Personally, I really enjoy dye applications where I am using the dry dye powder and applying that directly to yarn. And unlike when you have it dissolved, when you're applying the dry dye powder onto yarn, you get speckles of a color. And there isn't really a, such a thing as a pastel speckle. You're not gonna get a pale gray speckle. A pale gray dye may give you blue and red speckles, or maybe even black speckles that, yes, are less concentrated than, say, a black dye, which has a lot more pigment in it, but you can't necessarily know what color you're going to see from the pigments that are in the dye just by looking at the color name or the advertised swatch. Some dyes are made with pure pigments, some dyes break, which means that they have different pigments in there that might separate into different colors, and so I started doing these crude swatches to start to get a feel of how these different colors would behave. And these swatches, I call them crude swatches because I have no measurement of the dye. I don't know the ratio of dye to yarn, so the intensity of the color doesn't necessarily tell me very much because while doing the crude swatches, I might add a little bit more of one color than another. I might spread one more versus another. But what it can start to tell me is the hue of the color, uh, the intensity. I can know, do two pinks look very similar when I use them with dry dye powder, or is one more red, one more purple, one a little bit more brown? Those comparisons you start to see when you have that dry powder directly on the yarn. And therefore, this can be so helpful when you want to do something relatively monochromatic, like use a lot of different blues in one colorway, you can know that you're picking different blues so the speckles will look different. You're not going to pick two colors that when you speckle with them, they'll be nearly indistinguishable. And so this is the reason why I do this crude swatching, because it gives that great information. And now we have discovered through the years that the conditions through which we are doing these swatches do matter. <laughs> it matters for not all colors, but for some colors, if the yarn is hot or cold, if there's acid in the yarn already, or if I add it later. And this really comes into play when you're dealing with colors that are 
more tricky colors that aren't pure pigments that are a mixture of different pigments because you might then see breaking in different ways. If you want to avoid color breaking, uh, a representative from Dharma actually recommends that you, if you're dyeing a tonal, that you bring up the dye and the yarn to a bit of a simmer and then add a little bit of acid towards the middle of the simmering process versus towards the beginning, because this will slow down the rate that the colors absorb and you're more likely to have even coverage. And they also recommend that you can use ammonium sulfate uh, because it will uh, make the dye bath acidic a little bit more slowly than citric acid or vinegar, which also will help the color strike slowly. So that isn't necessarily relevant for painting with dry dye powders, but was a tip that I, from a conversation I recently had with a Dharma rep that I thought was really helpful. So I wanted to include that now that I'm talking about breaking. Before I go through all of the swatches that I've created, Let's just look at the finished dry yarn that I dyed here. I think I even have some footage of it under a black light. Uh, I did let the pinks spread out a lot and I love that little pop of purple towards the end. As we look through these swatch photos, most of them, most of them are with dry dye powders. However, there are a couple where I was swatching different liquid dyes because maybe in a dye along, I'm trying to pick the perfect pink for watermelon or for a flamingo or something like that. And if I had the dyes mixed already, then I'm gonna swatch with that. Uh, and there is one example here where I was looking at different dyes at a 1% depth of shade. That is with some reds that is from a video that came out uh, near the end of 2022. I've done a lot of the swatching in various live streams. Uh, I do have a whole playlist that you can go and check out if you wanna see the videos behind some of these colors. And if there's a combination on here that you're particularly interested in, I recommend pausing, screenshotting the screen, uh, and then continuing to watch the video. But as I said, I do have a blog post where uh, you can find a lot of these swatches. And the nice thing about that blog post is that I've added captions to each of the photos so you can search a particular color name and then be able to find any swatches that have that. So for example, if you wanna see Caribbean blue next to frozen, uh, you can see how many different situations you might be able to see that because what I don't have labeled are the conditions that each of these swatches were taken in, if things were hot, cold, um, and things like that. And so therefore, it could be worth seeing the same color in different situations, and then that can help you compare two different kinds of swatches to one another. I do refer to these swatch cards all the time personally, and I know I plan to do more in the future. And in fact, uh, the Chemnitz patrons just voted on a color for me to investigate that I will be filming later this January. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and Happy New Year, everyone. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and finally seeing a lot of these crude swatches all in one place. I know the formatting of them is not the same everywhere, but I hope that it is still useful and has some value to you. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. We are gonna be having so much fun exploring different ways to dye yarn uh, here on the Cabinet Tutorials YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.